I would imagine, but here we go. Picks and bans for game number two, KT versus Jin Air. There's the Azir ban against Jin Air right off. LeBlanc, LeBand. And will they ban the Sejuani and the Sivir again, or go with something Aww. else? We're never going to get to see Sweets Bard. I don't think so. We're not going to get to see Arrow's Callista this game either. Well, we got to see it last game. At least we've gotten to see it, Doa. Hooray. Sweets Bard remains. Listen deep. to my excitement. Hooray, Callista. <laughs> Tantalizing mystery of this tournament so far. Yeah. Are you not tantalized? I am completely tantalized right now. <laughs> You have no idea. Sejuani banned against Jenner and Tracer. So what's the final ban going to be? Do they allow someday to get that Maokai again? I suppose you probably leave it open. Do you ban Gragas here? Mm, that's a good question too. Do you ban Sejuani? Are you that worried about Score Sej Sejuani? No, you're that worried about Scores Gragas. Well, Sejuani's already banned, so they don't need oh, to worry yeah, about Sejuani that. Oh yeah, Sejuani banned on the red or on blue side this time. Yeah. Really interesting that that ban would switch over to KT Rollster. So, Alistair? Yeah, I'd say Alistair. Seems pretty reasonable. No, you go first pick Ferris. That's what you do. <laughs> no, Jin Air is the one who early picks poke champions with low mobility, though. Is Varus the new Zareth? That's, uh, that's the question. I think he might be. This is not a good thing. Well, I guess at this point, you just better pick Velkaz. It's the only natural thing to do. Seems completely he, natural. I think they'll take the Alistair here if they don't want the Rek'Sai or Chaser, considering that was, even though KT was very dominant in the last game, that was a bit problematic. Of course, Cassiopeia ah, is still on. Cassiopeia, yeah. So they will take that for Nagne again. Now, Jin Air last game willingly played the Varus into that. We'll see if they have another answer, such as Oriana. Well, you'd think the Rek'Sai would be picked up by Jin Air right here, and you would think the Rengar would not be picked up. But you never know, I guess. Yeah, I'm, I'm, a, bit, I'm a bit skeptical about this so far. Surprising lack of Nautilus today as well. Yeah, I think you take the Rek'Sai again, just because Score may be taking the Evelyn, and at least you got a lot of information about Eve's movements. Rek'Sai, Alistair. There we go. So Jin Air not deviating too much on at least part of their draft, taking the Alistair and the Rek'Sai, prioritizing that very early on in the last game as well. And that'll be locked in. Nope, oh, Rumble. Oh, OK. So willing to give up the Rek'Sai this game. Maybe and they want to take Evelyn. Wow, just really thinking about Trace's Rumble again. Now, Trace's Rumble has been really good so far this season, but it just didn't do a whole lot of work in that last game. And KT has that opportunity to grab the Rek'Sai away right now and be able to see the Evelyn if Chaser plays it. Chaser also could go for something else like Nunu. And the Sivir that they ban may well come through because KT is one of the best teams with Sivir Ultimate, yep. for sure, in terms of their early diving and giving Cassiopeia even more mobility. Well, the Sivir really is the KT special, and they can put together a pretty classic KT composition here if they want to go for that hard engage. And it looks like it's going to be the Evelyn again. Yeah, they really want those flanks. Score was great at finding them in the last game, even though he got found out a lot during the laning phase. So yeah. they're happy with his positioning in team fights, even if he can't make a whole lot of ganks. Seems like they're not as too the worried Rek'Sai about the Rek'Sai. Is taken yeah. by Jin Air. Jin Air's just building the same composition again. Pretty much. KT not differentiating too much either, but the difference that that Sivir brings to the table is Pretty huge. Pilot may go back to that quirky comfort pick. Well, and this would be something that would work a little bit better with the Varus as well, too. Oh They're yeah, gonna absolutely. Go that. That's that's some really nice siege actually between those two champions. Very nice siege. Yeah, great mid-game power spike. Yeah. Again, not a lot of peel for that backline though, which was the main problem in the last game as well. So you really have to go hard with the equalizer in that situation because taking it late game without 
much crowd control is quite dangerous. Yep, there is Corky locked in. All right, and are we maybe going to see, okay, I was gonna say, if it's a Cho'Gath, maybe we'll see a top Cassiopeia, but I doubt that. I think KT should just play Maokai Annie. Yeah, why not? Why, why not? change it? Why change what was working for you? Why show anything else? If it's not broke, don't fix it. Actually, in this game, when you successfully pulled off that composition, and you can dive even harder this time with the Sivir. Yep. Yeah, I think that's exactly what we're going to see. I mean, the Annie would fit in just as perfectly this time as it did last time. Yeah, I think you just take Annie. Screw it. Yeah. Go all in, KT. Just run through towers without fear. Tower dive them all day. Why stop now? Oh, Braum. Oh. Well, that works too. Not as well, but it does work. Fixer, one of the only Braum players that we have active right now yeah. in the league. He's the only one to pick it this season. Did take it to avoid tower dives with Urgot in one game, this time feeling that there's enough Engage that he can use the Braum for secondary engage here and for peeling onto Cassiopeia and Sivir. Also great because of that shield against the poke coming in from Corky. And so what is GBM going to play? I don't think you should play Varus here. I think you should take Oriana. But that would be a very heavy magic damage composition too. They have to a certain degree pick themselves into a corner where they may overload on AP this game. Well, would Ezreal work here as well? I think it probably would. Yeah. They'd be all right with Ezreal for that double poke comp. If they hit the power spike with Varus, they'll be fine with Varus. But this is, a, again, a very hard composition. Oh, oh boy. Oh, God. <laughs> all right, Yasuo it is then. GBM loves his Yasuo. OK, and the last time GBM played Yasuo, they won the game. It barely, barely, barely worked. <laughs> barely worked. <laughs> Yeah. And the reason why it barely worked was GBM had great ganks, really good ganks. He's a good Yasuo. And he has a lot of knockup with Rek'Sai and Alistair. He, his ganks onto the side lane got him very far ahead. But come the late game, he would try and go in and just instantly die, even though he was very far ahead without doing hardly any damage. And it was sort of a lucky equalizer last breath combo that actually managed to win Janair the game. So I'm not sold on this. Now, of course, there is that aspect you brought up in the first game, the wind wall blocking the twin fangs. So it's hard for Cassiopeia to follow up on the harass. Yeah. So in terms of lane matchups, that I think this could make sense. Well, I mean, if you if you end up fighting in a corridor or something like two, it blocks your whole team from being hit by it. You know, whereas you can turn around with the equalizer, your own rockets, things like that. So it maybe allows Jyn Air to kind of move a little bit more freely through the jungle as far as late game objectives go. It's also going to be really hard for Cassiopeia to land poison well. Yeah. Yasuo is sliding through minions. So in terms of lane, I can get why you would pick Yasuo here. It seems like a safer choice. But late game, it will be very difficult to kill. Jin Air, Corky Yasuo, Rumble, aiming for a big, big power surge in, in the mid game. And yeah, we'll see if it works. Jin Air trying to tie it up. Let's get in the game and see if they can pull it off. Welcome to Summoner's Rift, KT Rolster versus the Jin Air Green Wings. KT with a chance to 2 0 here, and they've got basically the same composition that they did in game number one, just swap out Callista for Sivir. Meanwhile, Jin Air going for uh, something a bit uniquely Jin Air. Yeah, well, Yasuo has 100% win rate so far this season, Doa. So. That's true, and uh, we have both teams that played him in this game right now. The Yasuo off, the great Yasuo off of champions. Right. I mean, I love watching Yasuo, so I'm just sad that he is as vulnerable as he is right now because he really does drop off in viability the longer the game goes on. I mean, we've seen GBM play a very, very good Yasuo. So again, you know, if anyone can pull it off, it certainly is him. Yeah, and I have to qualify this too because Yasuo is still very good in skirmishes. The way KT was playing him where they never really fought 5v5 until they were immensely far ahead of CJ. Mm -hmm. But in the 5v5s, that's when he dies too fast. If he has a chance to live and you don't have enough damage to burst him down instantly, which almost every five-man team composition does, that's where he can actually be good. But 
it's a very special circumstance, and you want to hit as many people as possible with that ult. Maybe he'll pull off some crazy five-man pulverized last breath. We could hope. Maybe. Time will tell. I can't wait till Echo is available in Create a Play. I played a little bit of Echo today. It was really fun. I was really bad, but it was really fun. <laughs> and so I'm looking forward to seeing what the pros can do. Yeah, me too. I'm yeah. sure that's a champion we will see probably pretty quickly here. Oh, yeah. Well, that's a champ with just so many opportunities and so much potential as far as, like, plays you can make with him. Yeah, just like all of the champions, Riot's been, wow, Trace nearly dying. Oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, releasing recently. Yeah. Things have gone... Much, much better since the pace slowed down, you know? Except Velkaz. Yeah, I like Velkaz. He's still good. He's just not the best. He's not anywhere close to the best. <laughs> he could be, though. He is the useless. Could be good. Oh, nice block right there on the Foss Bomb just to prevent. Oh, it didn't quite fit at the last hit, but does delay him a little bit. KT move into lane, just get a quick ward down while they push up. Pings, Janera knows what they're doing. And GBM really taking no damage in this lane so far thanks to the Yasuo passive shield. Mm -hmm. Thanks to his flow. He's got the flow. His mad flow. His robo flow this game. Project Yasuo with the robo flow. Oh, oh, score gets caught by Chaser here. That's a lot of early damage onto this Evelyn. GBM coming up to help out. Just being Not sneaky needed. right there. Yeah. Finding score once again using that tremor sense and getting the better end of a trade. GBM still just pretty much free farming right here. Yeah. Goes through the door and shield first just to maximize his HP and sustain. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Well, we have the uh, champion that shoots flame versus the tree. You'd think this matchup would go one way every time. <laughs> Only score can prevent forest fires. That's true. It's his job. Ranger score to the top lane, please. Smokey the score. I wonder if people outside of the US know about Smokey the bear, you know? Probably not. He's our mascot that prevents forest fires. Oh, headbutt pulverize on the arrow. Nice block on the boss again. No kidding. Yeah, Fixer really on point with this Braum. But like you mentioned, he's one of the only champions that, or one of the only uh, players out there that plays that champion these days. He does it well. He does indeed. Yeah. Well, Trey's actually playing pretty far back in his lane this game. Someday putting on the pressure, but it doesn't look like they actually want to get a kill, so. They did. He pulled back and let Trace move forward so he could make a play with the Evelyn. But again, score looks like he mostly just wants to play a passive game on this Evelyn, and that means GBM does have a lot of opportunities. Ooh, he's gonna miss the cannon. That sucks. Yeah. Miss. Yeah, that one hurts a bit. He didn't uh, gauge the damage on his Steel Tempest quite right there, and so missed out on that CS. But just trying to play back himself. Losing a little, little bit in terms of CS. He'll be about five down once he finishes off that wave. Yeah, it's not the easiest lane for Yasuo. Someday spots Chaser coming into the river with that ward. Now Chaser just trying to make sure that Someday's not going to get ganked as he moves the lane forward. And yeah. he doesn't see any sign of Evelyn with that tremor sense, so. Trace going to be OK. Chaser's still there just as a little bit of backup as the Wave gets pushed into the turret, and Trace looks to recall. Yeah, just kind of checking out the area. We'll see if he actually goes back now or if he wants to stick around lane for a little bit longer. Yeah, actually just walking into the river right there for a moment. And then immediately going back into the lane. So with the recall from score, still absolutely no threat there. I suppose with Trace disappearing down into the river for a few seconds, it does make it a little bit more risky for Nagne to push that lane up while GBM was back. Yeah, you don't know where yeah. Chaser is as well, so yeah. there's always a possibility that he's out there doing scuttle crab or something like that. Yep, so a little bit of mid lane protection, I suppose. Oh, Nagne needs a bit of protection. There's a flash right into the last breath. Exhaust goes down as well. Nice ult from Nagne. Wow. 
barely escaping there because of that ultimate. Had to use the flash, however, and that's that last breath has a very short cooldown, which is yes, the danger. Does. You can see already about a quarter back up, and Rek'Sai has that knockup so reliably. Chaser did have to use his flash for it, but GBM still has his. Nagne and GBM both taking exhaust this game to deal with each other. Hmm. Makes sense. That's a pretty, that was a very nearly first blood, though. Oh, nice block again with that Phosphorus Bomb, man. Fixer has just done yeah, so well in They just want to play a defensive lane. Yeah. Uh, they just want to play a defensive lane, get the farm as well as they can, move into the late game where this Cassia oh, is going to be very passive. powerful. Look at this, Evelyn coming in. So KD Rex trying to there. play. Yeah, that's true. When they had two stacks of the Braum passive onto uh, Pilot, they really wanted to make it happen, but it looked like Fixer just couldn't catch up with him. Nagne has to play so cautiously now yeah. without these summoner spells. GBM, last breath up in a matter of seconds, and there will be a window right there. Blue buff maybe grabbed by Chaser here. GBM making no motions towards it, and I think he's just going to let it go. Yep, for now. Corky's an attractive... Uh, choice for blue buff this game though that's one advantage of the Yasuo Rek'Sai combo is that you can empower your Corky in the mid game even further with that poke. That's a good point. Oh Epic Pulverize on to Fixer now but again you know, blocking every time and score coming in Pilot a little bit baited he uses that Valkyrie gets out of the ultimate sweep still in trouble there's the exhaust can he make it out teleports coming down for both top laners cancelled for both top laners as well but Pilot and Sweet managed to escape from that gank no flash used by Pilot, too. Really nice reaction to uh, avoid that ultimate from score. Yeah, a little bit dangerous. Uh, Arrow had not quite hit six oh, yet. Here go. comes Someday, gank in the mid lane, but that'll just be swept through. Yep. Not a, not a big problem for GBM. Still has not taken a lot of damage in this lane. Uh -oh. Chaser trying to get in there for the knockup. There's the last breath onto Someday, but Someday's pretty tanky. Does he have enough? Can he get out? No flash. GBM. Cutting him down, Chaser very low. First blood taken by Someday in the 1v2. GBM looking for some revenge, he gets it. Trace able to pick that kill up, and now the escape attempt from Jin Air, but Trace in a lot of trouble. Nagne coming up with those twin fangs. Oh man, score takes the kill, but Jin Air, a little bit of overcommittal there. Trace had no equalizer. He had used it sometime up in the top lane. Yeah, well, it's up now. And so his <laughs> cooldown wasn't available for the entirety of that fight, yet they took it anyway. They thought it was just going to be someday right there, but it, I mean, the 2v2 was pretty easily turned around. Like you said, the Maokai getting pretty tanky with that catalyst early on. And yeah. look at GBM. He has an Avarice Blade. He has no damage yet. He's not in any kind of situation where he's going to be able to take that fight, and he really paid for it. Well, yeah, I mean, someday essentially getting that first blood 1v2 before Nagne and Skor can really even get there to help him. Pretty impressive stuff. Well, Nagne was there pretty fast, and he is playing Cassiopeia, so his base damage is pretty incredible. Yeah, even with that tier, things are not bad. Trying to go after nope. him again. Oh, Ult is are. up now. Yeah, there's the Equalizer down on the Sunday. I think he's going to have a harder time making it out of this one. Yep. The ult getting burned through pretty quickly. Someday lives for a while. Oh, but Chaser actually took that kill. kill, too. That wasn't good. We've had junglers taking kills this game. Score grabbed the other one that should have went to Nagne. But greedy junglers in game two, I guess. It may have been a red tick that took out that last kill. But I Trace, was, that was a really yeah. good response from Jin Air. You know that someday's flash is down, equalizer's back up. Try and punish him, and they get it right as he walks into the river right there. So in spite of losing that little duel, they actually do even it up a few seconds later. Still a gold difference in favor of KT. Won some gold lead right there in the mid lane still for Nagne. Yep. GBM hasn't gone back in quite some time. Yeah, I would imagine he's he's got enough for that static shiv by now. Well, he should be getting close. And now, Pilot and Sweet trying to play defensively. They do have the Sheen available to them, but Fixer's been so good at just laning on this Braum and making sure they win all of those trades that they're going to try and go for a dragon right here. Yeah, right in front of the ward. GBM was recalling, but he cancels it, comes down. I don't know if he's going to be able to help too much. I don't know. There's a Sheen Corky here poking you. This is... Yeah. 
I mean, they can certainly get the last breath, but it's a 3v4. I don't think Jyn'Air wants to fight this. Just trying to harass as much as they can. The dragon is doing more damage. Scored about half health right now, but they get the dragon anyway. Yeah, with that Cassiopeia there, it's nice not much of a problem. Yep, oh, Fixer. Should be able to get over the wall. Yeah, yeah there we go over. with the W. No problem there. Trace even walked all the way down there, so Trace lost a lot of CS on that top lane turret as someday pushed it forward. You know, with the low damage that GBM has there, I don't I don't know, are you a bit surprised that Jyn Air really even tried to prevent that? I, I, I am, and I think it was a really good opportunity for KT because they recognized that GBM just can't do damage yet. Yeah. And they punished it. Chaser also had no tunnels on the bottom side of the map to actually ult to. You know, and because of this as well, GBM was recalling, but he canceled it when that dragon attempt started. Now he's kind of back in lane with still just this Avarice Blade. Well, fortunately for him, Nagne hasn't had a chance to recall yet, and True. KT did a really good job of sneaking that one in, I feel. They had that push uh, right as they knew that GBM wanted to recall, and Chaser happened to be back with no tunnels. Well, they get Found a nice timing try. where they get it for free, and Arrow, smart just to pop that ultimate to get out as well. Chaser taking it. Just takes the Ancient Krug. That's the big one. It's the Ancient Krug. What's the, are they the new Krugs? Are those the younger ones, Toa? I don't know, it's just like the Krug and the Ancient Krug. Scores here. For being ancient, he's not really that much bigger than the other Krug. He I was guess. also born like a minute and a half ago, so <laughs> how ancient can he be? I don't know, man. They're checking here. Not much. They want to perhaps dive this, but they don't know the scores, and now they do. They see him on the Tremor Sense. Yep. Oh. All right, well, they get another ward pretty easily, at least. And good damage onto the bottom tier one as well. And you're going to try and steal the red buff right now. Yasuo coming in. This one might be... This could end the game, yeah. one way or another. So it might be a bit of a challenge. No, Jin Air deciding that they just want to pressure the turret instead. Yeah, I think that's a bit safer. They are getting a little bit of damage done on top and bottom. I don't know what mid turret looks like right now, but we'll see if they've been able to poke that at all. So we're getting close to when Jyn'Air has to make plays. Yeah. And they have to start getting turrets down if they're going to win this game in the easiest manner possible. Otherwise, they have to deal with a late game Cassiopeia with a Sivir ult on her and a Maokai, which, uh, you know, not so great. Not so great a place to be in. Yep. The window of opportunity, once again, is fairly small for Jyn Air. Not as small by any means as it was last game, but still a, a, bit, a bit small, a bit risky. Like, this window is like your average, you know, like window on a car or something like that. But before, there was like a tiny porthole on a submarine. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. true. All right. So we should be approaching Trinity Force completion upon Pilot's next back. Uh, GBM, oh, he'll be he'd be happier with another item. Obviously, two two to three core items is really where Yasuo shines. So he's going to peak a little bit later on. But the fact that Jyn'Air didn't get that first dragon is pretty big, because they one of their main win conditions is that they can close the game off of dragons very early on before it gets into six item territory. Right. It's gonna be tough. And Agne just really shoving that lane hard right now. And he's got a good CS lead over GBM as well too. I mean, despite the early minutes going well for Gank by Mom, everything else has been all Nagne. Just some clever bush trading up in the top side. This has been such a passive game so far. Yeah. Not the most action-packed. Still, not the most action-packed. Oh. That was very close. <laughs> nice try. Yeah, if he would have gotten the ult off on him. Oh, GBM coming in anyway. Okay, he blocks it with the win wall, but now here comes score as well. Oh. Ult misses if that had hit. If that had hit. 
Yeah, that, been pretty good for KD. There okay. wasn't a lot of follow-up CC because the Petrifying Gaze had already been used, but maybe they would have been able to chase down GBM with enough Twin Fangs. I think that was what was going to happen in that case, yeah. But we saw the strength of Windwall right there. I mean, GBM would have almost certainly been dead if he hadn't had that ability. Now we are up. Oh, Whoa, Flash Pulverize. Flash for Flash. But that's going to be some decent damage onto Chaser as Nagane does a little bit to him with the Twin Fang and the Poison. Now, I think that's a really worthwhile trade, though, because you can always headbutt pull the Cassiopeia later yeah. and knock her up for the last breath. So you already have a gap closer. Meanwhile, that's Nagne's really only tool. GVM yeah. going to recall right before this dragon. He will get there in time. Good warding down for both teams right now. So Pilot needs to recall, though. Pilot does not have that Trinity Force yet. Score going to come down to the bottom side. Sweet is there. He will get seen. Oh, Score doing some damage to Sweet here. And if Sweet goes down, this dragon is going to be a problem for Jin Air. Yeah, now you recall. Well, that's, uh, Do they that's not a have... big ult right now down. Do they not have the timer for the dragon? They might not have it. Score going after Chaser right now. A little bit of damage on him as well. KT just doing a very good job. Actually, Score in a bit of trouble. Dragon is up right now. Teleport coming in from someday. Just to get there and get some positioning onto the Dragon. A lot of damage onto GBM as well, too. So, Jynair sufficiently poked out, I think, well, to make this Dragon kind of tough. They have a Corky, so... They do. But the Braum is going to be there in the choke. And here comes the Rek'Sai, all healed up right now. Equalizer, very dangerous. Knock up on the Nogne. G uh, GBM wasn't there to, pull, to uh, capitalize on that. Someday coming in, there's the Equalizer going down. A lot of AOE damage onto KT right now. Sweet looking for another knockup opportunity. There goes Someday. GBM picks up that kill. Dragon's still GBM alive right still now. GBM still has his ult. That's right. Waiting for things. Steel Tempest over the wall, not catching anyone with that. Trace doing a lot of damage to Nogne, just turning and roasting Fixer instead. And wow, Jin Air able to take the Dragon and the fight with a couple kills there. Miguel letting Sweet finish that one off. Very nice turnaround. Trace hitting a solid equalizer right into the middle of the composition. And KT, they're not really prepared to deal with Jyn Air's composition. I think that they were banking on the fact that since Pilot didn't have that Trinity Force yet, they were going to be able to deal with the damage coming out. But at the same time, Arrow only had the BF Sword. So the AD carries were approximately even in power, except there were some pretty critical buys that came through. GBM, the fact that he didn't even have to use his ult right there is pretty huge. They're going to get a mid turret also. Great, wow. great fight in the mid game. Jyn Air's still going to need more than that. Well, let's take a look at this. KT's going to turn immediately and try and engage onto the Corky. They walk forward, though. Th that Equalizer won the fight, hands down, because it caused Score and Nogne to stop dealing damage. Everyone collapses onto Someday right there, and then they're able just to charge forward with the rest of their AoE and continue to get a couple of kills. There's Fixer going down eventually. There he goes. <laughs> but that Equalizer was clutch. Yeah, definitely. And KT really kind of walked into it too. Everybody grouping up, making it pretty easy for Trace. And pretty easy for Jyn Air to win that fight. Take a couple objectives off it too. But like you said, they're going to need more. I mean, if this game stretches off too long, KT is still going to be in a great spot to just kind of negate a lot of the Yasuo damage to take Yasuo out very quickly as yep. well. Frozen Hearts, Randuins will come in. And yeah, Corky drops off. Yeah, Corky drops off, Rumble will drop off. Yep. Leandri is actually the first item on the trace, so really trying to trade hard with Someday and Top. Well, I think intelligently knowing that, they need to make something happen now, you know? Well, it's also Someday did not take any MR. He did glory into oh, Ninja yeah, right. Tabby because I think he, w he wants to fight in the mid game, which mm -hmm. I don't really agree with. I think he should just try and deal with the Rumble as best he can and keep Rumble in top side. But without that magic resist, the percent damage will be pretty serious from Leandres. And I don't know if he's actually going to be able to trade up in the top lane. And this is how Jyn Air played with the Yasuo last time. They got some early turrets down. They played very well with Yasuo in the mid game. But once it hit after 30 minutes, the Yasuo was a lot less effective. Yeah, and I think this one might be a little bit tougher of a game than their last one with Yasuo, if it gets to that point. Oh, sweet. Finds an Agne in the brush, but he does not want to see that. KT just bullying their way into this mid lane turret. Nice. And yep. they're going to force a TP. Here's the engage. Yep, teleport coming down. And uh, Brahmal used just to keep Jynair away. They're going to get the turret. And now KT just backing off. 
Wow, really late response from Jin Air. They were trying to get the tier one down in the bottom side with just Corky. GBM was in the jungle with Chaser, but they didn't have a good ward to actually teleport onto to force that fight and punish the fact that KT was really overextended during their power spike. Now what are they gonna do? They can't really do a Baron. Well, they're gonna try to bait it, I suppose, but I think KT should know that Jin Air really isn't in a position to take this right now, and yeah, KT not really responding to it's it. It's 21 minutes into this game. Yeah, they, it's, it's a dead work. even game in terms of gold. There's no... You don't have a, t you don't have a team that's gonna take Baron quickly, too, so I think KT kind of calling that bluff. Uh, no Infinity Edge yet on the Asso, it does make it a little bit difficult. Yeah. So that was just a pretty clean outplay there by KT Rolster, and Jin Air pretty much just gave up that tower for free. Yeah. Didn't even, I don't even know how much damage they got onto the tier one in the bottom side. Oh, there, that answered my question. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> a lot. All right. Well, that works. So two turrets to one, still in favor of Jin Air for now. Two minutes until that next dragon, and both teams tied at one dragon apiece. And I think this next dragon fight is going to be kind of one of the defining moments of this game. It should be, anyway. So Outer's falling now for Jin Air. They're staying one ahead, even as KT presses forward. Pilot can't stop it by himself. And now the next dragon going to be coming up. Everyone's starting to prepare for it. Everyone's starting to group up. Wave is pushed. Arrow may want to go back and get a shopping trip in before his next fight right here. But Nagne in a really good place. Nagne has the Echo, has the, the Seraph's Embrace for that shield in case he gets targeted by Yasuo. Right. And that combined with the exhaust should mean a pretty easy survival, even though this Infinity Edge was just grabbed. Wow, Trace Void Staff, they are really going hard on this mid game. Yeah, yeah, well, they know it's kind of it's like all do about or die the burst. right now, yeah. It's all about the burst onto the enemy. And looks like the third tier one may go down in favor of KT now. Wow, this is bold to do right before this dragon, forcing a fight on the top side. I mean, the fight's coming to them. Yeah, it certainly is. And will they continue to engage? The turret's safe for the moment, anyway, extremely low. Pilot kind of off on his own right now. I think he was getting a red buff. Yeah, but I guess so. Very little HP on this tower. And are we going to see the. There is no void rush right now for Chaser as KT baits the entirety of Jin Air into the top side of the map and then cuts off their approach to the dragon. Yeah, very nice. But they don't have any wards down there, really. And they don't have a whole lot in their inventory, too, as well, it looks like. I mean, the jungler and support have some, so they should be able to get some vision. Yeah, they do. But can KT hold the river? They're a bit split up right now as well, too. I think Janair is going to be able to get in there. Yep, they are. No problem. And KT now has to walk through a choke against this Corky and this Equalizer. Good luck. In order to get some sort of position. They're split up a little bit right now. Trace is waiting there to use his flame spitter. Someday finds an angle, but he's getting ticked by the Leandries. Oh boy. Oh, there's a knockup. There's the equalizer coming down. The Brahma, though, prevents Jin Air from coming in too quickly. Arrow and score doing a little bit of damage from the outside. Someday coming in as well. Dragon taken by Jin Air, but the first kill comes in for Nagne. Jin Air in a little bit of trouble. GBM at about half health right now. Chaser turning around, trying to zone. Smite goes down into Someday. Pilot, though, Valkyrie away after Someday chases him in. Chaser getting back. There's the last breath, though. GBM doing some damage, getting taken down, though, by Arrow. There's a double kill now. That re-engage may come back to haunt Jin Air. It looks like it's not working out. Well, they used the exhaust immediately, so GBM came back in but did almost no damage. Yeah. Now they got the dragon, and they traded two for three. Yeah, fairly even for Jin Air. Yeah, fairly even, but going fairly even at this point of the game is not something that's okay. And a large part of that was Trace had a pretty poor equalizer right there. A lot of it landed on the wall instead of in the choke point. Mm. And I don't think this looked like the waves hit in a way that this tower is just barely, because look at what, I mean, they have them where they want them, right? 
There's the knockup, but there's no last breath on the dog day. Nogne flashes back, but that equalizer should have been going straight back, not along the wall right there. Right. And that would have prevented Nogne from getting close enough to deal a lot of damage. That was a very, very big mistake on the equalizer. That allowed KT a lot more freedom in terms of dealing damage with Cassiopeia. Now here they're gonna come back in, Chaser, to get the double knockup, but Nogde doesn't really take damage from it. And so well, the Arrow's pretty free just to auto his way to a kill. To two kills, even. Yep. The uh, exhaust immediately on GBM when he came in. And you notice, too, he died really, really fast in that fight, too. He came into it at half health, but still, I mean, Yasuo very fragile. Taking a look at this Baron right now. Jenner just definitely not enough of a lead unless they get some miracle combo to come out of this one. If they can kill Nagne fast enough, they may be able to win a fight. But they yeah. basically have to equalize their big one last breath in. Yeah, it's going to be tough. Cassiopeia also now closer and closer to that Void Staff, and the only defensive item that Jyn Air has is a, an Aegis. Really feels like Jyn Air is trying to play League of Legends on a harder difficulty than everyone else this <laughs> season, you know? They're like, ah, it wasn't, as, it wasn't enough of a challenge. We need to really push ourselves this season. No, it's bold. It's bold to play these burst decompositions in the Cinder Hulk meta because yeah. one of the reasons why Yasuo is gone is not only because of his numerous nerfs, but the fact that a lot of these bursty champions simply can't deal with the level of tankiness that this meta has brought. Especially with Alistair coming back in, Braum. These are pretty Nautilus. These are pretty ridiculous champions to, to deal with. Not like when first mages were popular when we saw a lot of Zyra, Sona, Supports that could be easily 100 to 0 if caught alone. Yeah. And the map presence pretty much occupied by KT at the moment, able to push back all those waves. But look at the gold, it's dead even right now. And while that's that may seem like it's very close, again, this is not a good thing for Janair. They need to be ahead. Really bad for Janair. Yeah. Super bad and probably game ending, because who is GBM going to kill right now? Well, He's going to get exhausted, and that's it. I mean, the last time they ran something like this too, they barely won against a fairly weak team. Yeah. So if you barely won against a team like that in that situation, how are you going to beat KT? Because this went well in scrims, Doa. I guarantee you that is the answer. Scrims, man. Scrims. The Great Deceiver, Scrims. <laughs> but in all seriousness, because Nogne and Fixer both have exhaust, there's never going to be a team fight where GBM is not exhausted. Yeah. There, that is just not going to happen. KT is not going to give Janair the go. opportunity for Fix either. Sweet. Goes deep. Janair wants to engage. There's a knockup. No last breath, though. KT just turning immediately onto this Alistar. Nogne doing a lot of damage from the outside as well as Arrow. Oh boy, Jin Air, this is not the greatest idea. GBM in a lot of trouble already. Someday knocked up. Looks like they might be able to get a kill. No, two kills for Nagne. Now Someday still alive. Another one for Arrow. GBM long dead. A triple kill for Nagne now. And Trace goes down. That is an ace. Jin Air started that fight. They wanted to try something there. And well, they Sweet tried to get the flank at the knockup. They knew yeah. this was a last ditch effort. They knew which way this game was going. And yep. they're like, well, if we don't kill Nogne immediately, then we lose. And that's what happened. So really not a whole lot that you could do right there. That was, they had to keep fighting. They probably should have played more aggressively earlier in this game. And now that's a perfect ace and a Baron for KT Rolster. Right, let's watch this one again. He messed up his combo too. He botched his combo. Yep. But even if he had hit his combo, realistically, they probably still would have lost this fight. Yeah, well, you can see GBM just not finding an opportunity to even come in. No, GBM just spends the entire fight running away. Yeah. Had to cleanse some CC, then he auto-attacks Someday a couple times. And then, and then look at this, Someday too, surviving with his passive and then getting the face of the mountain on him as well. And then just peeling everybody, just twisted advancing over and over and over again. GBM opted to go for that QSS instead of 
armor penetration as well. Yep. Against this frozen heart and glacial shroud that he is dealing with at the moment. I suppose I mean, there's not there's not really anything he can do. It's no. it's over for Yasuo at this point. Well, well, it's a, it was bold, but did not work. I'm just surprised because we saw one game of Yasuo from Jin Air, but otherwise they haven't been taking these kind of risks in pick and ban phase. Yeah. That's oh, interesting. I mean, obviously, they, they found something that they thought worked, um, and it can work. We've seen it work. But against a team like KT, against some of the better teams in the league, and here we go, they're going to try again. There's a nice last breath. Onto Nogne, but look at that, still okay. All the focus, and Nogne just turns and ults after all the CC ends. And that means KT is going to be able to turn this one right around. Yep, taking out the top laner first, and KT just rolling over Jin Air. Pilot, the last man standing, long distance twisted advance and score coming in. Oops, dies to the turret there. <laughs> Pilot gets a kill, but it's still going to be an ace in the end as well. They focused everything they had on Nogne, even got the last breath, but it wasn't enough damage. Nogne just backs up, turns around, well, ults everybody. Nogne has Rylice now. That is that. How are you going to deal with him? He's just, yeah. he's actually has too much HP to burst down with their composition. Oh, someday. Uh, they have Careful to, there, buddy. Yeah, they can't keep going on this one with the death timer still so low. Yeah. GBM going to come back up. Well, he has a Vamp Scepter now. So he's got that going for him. Huh? I'm, I'm just surprised. I think this happens, Noah, as we take a look at this replay right here. Let's watch, watch everything it. they put on a Nogne here. Well, Nogne also gets into the brush. There's the flash knockup just on a Nogne. Great equalizer. And then they knock him up again. Face of the mountain. Chilling smite used on him and turns around and just ults but people. This is the problem. GBM died immediately. Yep. I mean, just was deleted after hitting that last breath. Yeah. I mean, playing. Yasuo at this point is kind of like playing a LeBlanc only you can't do her combo unless somebody else starts it for you and you have like less damage. Here we go. Uh, well, they caught someday, but here comes Nogne and the rest of KT. Another ult comes down. So they do get the kill onto Maokai, but score just throwing out those hate spikes. And here we go. Arrow pops his ultimate. Nogne coming in for more, some more kills. A kill for Arrow. Score chasing everybody down at this point. He's got such speed. He does. So does Nogne, too. Yep. Nogne dodging that. The great chase. Another kill for Nogne coming in. They've got that turret there, but I don't think Nogne is really going to be deterred by this. GBM hiding behind his wind wall for the moment, anyway. That is going to be about it. Yep, and here come the super minions. Well, this was a much more one-sided affair tonight, Doha, than we thought it would be, but yeah. a lot of that is Jinner. You know, I was going to say, I think that this teams do this. Because in scrims, there are higher kill games and people are more willing to fight. Right. But when you just turtle against the kind of compositions that Jin Air has been trying, to been, run, been trying to run, you just don't get enough money or like commitment from the other team to hit during your power spike. And they just sit there and yeah. wait for you to miss your timing window. And that's it. Then there's not a lot of coming back because someday is just too tanky for you to kill. This really nice little move with the teleport too, teleporting out of the minion that was targeted by the turret to let the next wave catch up. Yep. It's subtle, but it's good stuff. I like how I like how Nagne has a Banshee's fail now. It's like I have enough damage. Yeah. They're all squishy. They have no tank. So I'm just gonna get a veil so I can't get ulted. Sounds like a good plan to me. Fixer just advancing with his shield. Now they have to hit him with two knockups. Yeah. That's so <laughs> annoying. Yeah, Nagne is nigh unkillable at this point. Ooh, someday. Purpose load right there. Yeah, no kidding. Taking a lot of turret damage. Well, Dragon's up in two minutes. KT just backing up. I actually haven't seen this recall animation. Oh. <laughs> Pretty good. I like LT Gray Braum. I think it's one of the better skins. I'm yep. a fan. All right, so just jungle cleanup right now, waiting for the Baron for KT. Well, Janair clears the minion waves out of their base, waiting for their turn to die. Well, Janair, I mean, the thought process now is like, well, guys, maybe they'll walk in 1v1 and, or 1v5 and let us kill them all. Maybe. 
maybe uh, maybe the spectator client will bug splat and we can get a regame. <laughs> who knows? <laughs> This kind of lead, I don't think they would regame. I think they would just give no, it to I KT. Don't think so, yeah. It's not a reasonable <laughs> I don't regame. Think so. Yep. Yeah, it's a 11,000 gold lead at two inhibitors down. Minutes. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't think I don't think Jin Air is coming out of this one with the W. So, do you not believe in GBM miracles? The, nope. The five-man pull of last breath is coming, Doa. On top of an equalizer, it's coming for you. That would not even. That do would be it incredible. At this point. It's possible, and it would be incredible. But I don't even think that would do enough damage. Pilot gets a five-man Gatling gun to shred all their armor, and then the last breath comes in. The everybody, dream. everybody pr forgets to press exhaust. It's great. Yeah, I can see it. <laughs> I can see it happening. That's what it would take. Pretty much. Well, final turret. Going down, and so now the inhibitor wide open. KT rushing into the base. Nice alt. Wow, GBM already nearly blown up. Equalizer comes down. They get on the Nogne. Nogne just cleansing out of everything. Easy peasy. And KT, understandably, with another easy win here. In this fight, exhaust onto Trace. He's going to style Zonius before going down. Another double kill for Nogne. And Pilot watches with sadness from the fountain. GG, and KT takes the 2 0. So. Yeah, like you said, a quicker affair than we expected, but KT really showing their dominance in uh, picks and bans here tonight, playing things out well, and Janair making it hard for themselves uh, in different ways in both games. <laughs> They're very good at using varied methods to make the League of Legends matches hard for them to win. Janair, Janair continues to confuse in picks and bans, I feel. They're really and their own worst enemy, aren't they? I mean, they kind of are, but that was yeah. a great win by KT again, like you said, showing some really good adaptations in that pick ban phase and uh, having pretty big edges going into the games before they even started. And then the team just playing it out beautifully. Yep. They they played around the Oswo and the Varus extremely well. They knew how to take down those compositions and they did it in a very clean fashion. So unfortunately, Jin Air Green Wings will fall. KT on the rise. And now Jin Air and KT will actually be tied in the standings. Yep, that's right. A win for KT Rolster. Man, they're looking good right now. Yeah, I would say I would say after